Labor Day is just around the corner, and the Marine Police, they'll be out in full force. Let's do a ride along to see how we can avoid the handcuffs. Let's go have some fun. Great work is mandatory. It's a must. If you want to continue to grow and you want to get to the goals that you have set forth, then you have to put out great work. It's got to be the best. What's up guys and welcome back to Shop Talk Tuesday. And with Labor Day just less than a week away, we want to make sure you guys are cruising to the rules of the waterway. So Trooper Peacock with Aaliyah Marine Division is going to be kind enough to let us do a ride along on his vessel and he's going to take us all around and show us the hot spots in this area and where you just might be hanging out for your Labor Day. All right, Trooper Peacock, I'm How's Dustin going? Jackson and I uh, appreciate you bringing us out here and showing us the boat, showing us around. But I couldn't help but notice we came into Live Oak Landing and how nice it was and Tell us a little bit about y'all's relationship with those guys, and I mean, they got a great facility. So the county has taken over Live Oak Land. It used to be a privately run facility, and they've really dressed it up. They're, they're putting a lot of money and effort into bringing it up to a place that people can launch. Yeah. One of the best launches in Bowling County. Yeah, you can tell. I mean, I've launched my boat at a bunch of different launches, and I tell you, that thing was nice, and I couldn't help but notice the campground coming in. Yep. And then uh, where you're keeping your boat there, so is that where the boat stays all the time? Or? It is. Uh, the worked with the county and they have allowed us, built us a little covered shed so we can keep our boats on lift, which increases our response time. If we have an accident on the water or on the interstate, we got both interstates, I-10 and I-65 that cross the water here. That's a great launch to yep. use. So we've came up here, we've uh, we beached up at some uh, state owned property, right? Right. So right now we're sitting at the south end where Middle and Tensaw River come together. Okay. Just south of I-65, which you can probably see in the background. Yes, sir. Um, most of this land out here inside the river systems mm -hmm. are either privately owned or state owned or state managed. Okay. There's also designated areas throughout this wildlife management area where you can camp. You can't just pull up to any bank and clear your spot out and throw a tent. You have to look on the maps and charts yeah. and figure out where you're at and those are the designated areas. So couldn't help but notice the kiosk here on the beach area and it's, I mean, it's a perfect place to pull up. But when people are coming here, what are they typically doing? Is it recreational or hunting or what would they do? So it's really, doing? really seasonal. Okay. So right now it's the summertime, it's nice sure. and warm. This is a very pretty sandy spot with a little shallow water. Yeah. They'll beach up here, hang out. Some gotcha. people will camp out, spend the night. Yeah. Um, just have a good family oriented environment is what we're pulling for. Yeah. But as it cools down and hunting season opens, you'll have your hunters. The They'll hunters, come yeah. in and set up and, and camp out here so they have quick access to an early morning hunt. And be mindful when you're out here, uh -huh. know whether you're on private property or you're on state-owned property. Okay. And if you're, on, if you're on private property, you have to have permission from that landowner. Sure. And if you're on state property, you gotta follow the rules and regulations of that map. Gravine's not a designated campsite. Okay. So you need to follow the rules that apply to that specific area. Absolutely. You know, this show, we really wanted to go over um, our recreational boaters and, and what you guys are looking for and what will keep them safe and healthy and out of trouble out here on the water. So several different things we're looking for. Yes, sir. Number one safety concern is life jackets. PFDs for every person on board. Okay. You, there's different types. You have type one, two, and three, which is required for every person on board the boat. Okay. If your boats are over 16 feet long, you require two extra pieces of equipment. One of them is a type four throwable, okay. which is either the square seat cushion yes, or that sir. round ring buoy. Just be careful when you purchase one of these inflatables, mm -hmm. if it's labeled a type five, it has to be worn in order to count. Really? So it doesn't count just laying in the boat. One, two, and three life jackets, they're good as long as you have them in the boat. Okay. There's other things which we look for, your vessel registration. Yes, sir. Um, which three inch block lettering mm -hmm. of contrasting color. Yeah. We, we look at that when we're riding down the river, a camouflage boat with camouflage letters, not That's very nice. contrasting. <laughs> so you're probably gonna get pulled over Sure. to make sure that it's properly registered. And at that point, we're going to check all your safety equipment. We're going to check for your life jackets sure. again. We're going to check for a fire extinguisher. Mm -hmm. If your gas tank is in a compartment or strapped down to the boat, then we're going to make sure that you have a fire extinguisher. That's Absolutely. just one of the requirements. Sure. That and make sure it's, once you get your tag re uh, recertification in the mail, Yes, sir. go get it and put that proper put on. monthly yeah. sticker on. In my boat, we've got the little red cord that hangs down and I'm supposed to clip it on. What is that for and how serious is that to you guys? That's an engine shut off device. So okay. what that does, if you fall over or get outside that operator's console, yes, sir. it'll kill that engine. Okay. So boats less than 24 feet in length 
with greater than a 50 horsepower, you're required to have that attached to you at all times. Okay. Now, that is a great piece of equipment to have attached to you no matter what size boat you have. Sure, um, makes sense. A tiller handle out here on the water with a 40 horse may not be required to have it. But if you hit a stump and you get thrown over, that boat will sit there and do circles. Sure. And you don't want to be at risk to exactly. be injured or, or, yeah. A lot of our accidents, the severity could have been lessened if they had been wearing a keel cord. Sure. They would have got thrown out, the boat would have shut off, possibly made it back to the vessel. But in some cases, it's, it's created a much more dangerous situation. Absolutely. Obviously, don't just shove it in your pocket or hold it right. in your hand. That's not going to cut it. You know, um, if you were to get thrown out, you want something that's there that's going to cut the engine off. That's correct. That makes good sense. All right, Trooper Peacock, this has been fun, nice and shady and all, but I want to see what this boat will do. I want you to take me over to one of the most popular spots around here. Everybody knows Gravine Island. Well, and uh, let's talk about the do's and don'ts of what they should be doing there while they're hanging out with the family and friends and uh, maybe what they shouldn't be doing as well. Well, let's head that way. Yes, sir. All right, Officer Peacock, that was a fun ride in, and here we are at Gravine Island, and I, along with a bunch of our uh, viewing audience, they hang out here a lot. And I know this Labor Day, they're probably gonna be piling out here. And this is one of the areas that you guys watch and make sure that everything's going, you know, that's under control. But what are some of the things that y'all are looking for, some of the, like, maybe the do's and don'ts of Gravine Island? So, Gravine Island is not a designated campsite. Okay. So, you can't be Set, building a fire, setting tents, or drinking on the island. Sure, yes We're sir. We're looking for that to assist the state lands people. Okay. Um, as far as boating safety, mm -hmm. we're looking for careless or reckless operation. Boats sure. flying up in amongst the congested areas, possibly running over someone. Right. We want to keep that down. We definitely don't want any accidents. Absolutely. Looking for boats easing around, riding on the, the gunnel of the boat with their okay. legs hanging off or leaning over. Sure. Riding up on the bow on a pedestal seat. Mm -hmm. Anything like that, that that's relatively unsafe, we're going to stop and address it. Sure, it's reckless. It, that could cause danger to themselves, that's danger right. to the others. And that's what the whole goal of this thing. It's not to come out here and, and, and ruin somebody's day, but it's to protect them and keep them safe. Absolutely. We want to keep the boating public safe, and that's yes, our job. Yes, sir. Another thing we're looking for is impaired driving on the water. Sure. So there's no open container law. We get asked that question a lot on the boat. Absolutely. But there is no open container law. Okay. The driver cannot be intoxicated while operating that boat. Makes so sense. So if you pull if we pull you over and you've been drinking, we're gonna run you through the uh, field sobriety test. Sure. To make sure that you're safe to operate that boat and get yourself and all your passengers home. That's right. Yeah, because you're you're uh, you have the passenger's liability on your hands Absolutely. and you know if you're impaired or or, or been drinking and can't drive, then obviously that's a major issue out here. Now, as far as the passengers are concerned, it's perfectly legal for them to have an alcoholic beverage on the boat, uh, but the driver cannot. The, the driver can have an alcoholic beverage. Okay. He just cannot be impaired above the legal limit to operate that boat. Understood, okay. So if you had to pick like one offense that guys did just keep going, you know, keeps happening time after time, especially on major holidays, what would one of those offenses be? I'd have to say, PFDs, okay. life jackets. Somebody right. come down here to the island with three people on their boat and two of their buddies wanted to ride back early. Ah, yep. And then they jumped on the boat without making sure that they had enough life jackets on board for everybody. That makes sense. Yeah, I could I could absolutely see that happening. And you know, those are things are so situational, but you gotta be aware. Absolutely. And especially if you're the captain of the boat, you're responsible for everybody on board. Exactly, operate out here in a safe manner. It's a place where people can come out and have a good time, but they got to do it safely. We absolutely want everybody to enjoy this beautiful water we have here. Yes, sir. But we do want them to go home safe. Well, Trooper Peacock, I appreciate your yes, time. Sir. You've been a wealth of knowledge and uh, appreciate all the information that you've given us. I know our customers and our viewing audience will get a lot out of this and uh, we appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Enjoyed it. Thank, Thank you again. Yes, sir.
That's going to do it for this episode of Shop Talk Tuesday. And remember, if you're enjoying this Labor Day weekend out on the water, keep safety first. And after all that fun is done and your boats need no detail, head on over to EZNDetail.com and click Get My Estimate. That's going to do it for this episode, and I'll see you next week. And with Labor Day just a, less than a week away, be a great blooper me falling in. <laughs>